Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, globally, millions of people each year come face to face with uh, the criminal justice system because they are suspected or accused of uh, crimes. Many are arrested and detained at police stations or law enforcement facilities. Some are released while significant proportions are held in custody pending determination of guilt or innocence. And unfortunately, some are lost in the system. To decongest the prisons, the administration of criminal justice in Nigeria no doubt needs review of the administration, procedure, and policy of the criminal justice sector. And joining us uh, live to, of course, have a conversation on this is Obiamaka Jigbo, um, a legal practitioner once again. Thank you so much for stepping in and for joining us. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, th this conversation is coming um, mostly because of the events of the past week across Nigeria, in Edo State, in Wari, here in uh, Lagos uh, also, uh, with uh, prison um, um, breakouts becoming very, very regular. Um, I'm going to start with going back to something called the Prison Decongestion Decree of uh, 1993. I think it's called Decree 18. The decree basically gave power to members of the task force to visit prisons all over the country to uh, spot check and release uh, certain categories of prisoners awaiting trials. Uh, for example, those cases of stealing, which have um, spent above three months in cost, uh, custody, cases of robbery, which have spent above three months in custody also, except armed robbery. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with this decree. Um, why haven't we revisited that decree 18? And how much difference will you know that make? Um, firstly, I would like to state that I have an NGO, which I, uh, which I refer to, as Hope Initiative, and the sole aim of this NGO is to start a, um, a campaign for total decongestion. Um, the decree, uh, decree 19, 1999, 1993 is amongst all the obsolete laws we have. And I must state it categorically, this, uh, this syndrome of awaiting trial um, inmates issue is totally uh, unconstitutional. And nobody has to be in, uh, nobody has to be incarcerated while they are pending trial. It's totally unconstitutional, and I don't understand why they are in jail. Okay, and, and you know what would you say has led to these large number of persons that are thrown in in jail and in prison for months and sometimes years um, without trial and without, um, of course, getting to plead their case. Firstly, it, the, the bulk of the the, the 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 bulk of the matter starts with the police. The police are not doing proper investigation. And prior to this time, before the police would take anybody into custody, they have to have um, a written authority to to take to 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 take, take anybody to trial from the DPP. That's the the. the, the the public prosecution's office. And now what they do is they get somebody, take them into court, leave them in court, leave them in jail, and sometimes, and they, they now start changing up the DPP's um, uh, advice, which is totally wrong. So by, by, by waiting up the DPP's advice, if the person in custody doesn't have anybody monitoring the system, they end up losing the person in the system. As we are talking, I have 10 people that I'm, tr I'm, trying, I'm trying to follow up their cases. One has been in incarceration for 10 years, and his co-accused have been released seven years ago. So this, this whole awaiting trial system should be, should be scrapped and let us follow the normal procedure. The police should do correct investigation. When they have, when they have got concluded their investigation, they transfer the files to the DPP. The BPP gives them advice, and then they now go take the person to court. That's my take on that, and that's what's causing all this. Because we have seen, we have we have uh, criminal correctional facilities which are meant to cater for 1,000 people, and they have about 4,000 or 3,000 inmates, and which defeats the whole rehabilitation process, which is why people are sent to the correctional facilities for. 
All right. So some other thing that I'm going to ask is, you know, the aspect of legal representation. Um, are there any percentage of suspects that are informed of their rights to legal assistance and representation and also are given the opportunities to contact a lawyer um, in, in the whole process? Well, uh, the ones I have, the ones I have interviewed in the course of this NGO say no, that they, they are first arrested, they are interviewed, they are tortured in some cases, and um, after that, then years after, they are now allowed not to call a lawyer, but to call a member of their family. And sorry, days after, they are now allowed to call a member of their family, which is totally unconstitutional, which is totally unconstitutional. Give me a give me a clear picture of how bad this is, because um, from what you've described, it seems that there are thousands of persons just languishing in jails across Nigeria uh, without any idea when they would be set free for maybe petty crimes. Um, but what exactly is the picture like? The picture is is bleak. It is very, very uncompelling. Sometimes I get frustrated. Sometimes when I hear there's a jailbreak, a part of me is sad and a part of me is happy, happy in the sense that, oh, now let these people think about these people that are in jail, uh, uh, that are waiting. First, first in section 36 of the Constitution says that um, we're, you're innocent until proven guilty. Now you find people that are in jail the bail processing system is so tedious that it's just as if it's made there for some people to make money and for some people to suffer. According to Google, there are over 50,000 inmates awaiting trial. And the percentage of the um, people that are convicted, the people that are convicted, according to Google, is about 20,000 inmates. And we now have awaiting trial inmates who should not be there constituting over 50%, 70% of the total prison inmates. That means there's something wrong. We have to, people, somebody has to start talking. People have to start doing things. That's why my NGO is starting a campaign of, for total decongestion. 1,000 inmates per state, 12,000 inmates per year. In the next five years, if the government agrees with us, the, 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 the inmates should be totally decongested and we will now lock up. It should, be, it should be very difficult for one to enter into a correctional facility the same way it is difficult for one to come out. And the bad thing about it is that when you're now processing, when you're now um, processing um, these inmates for decongestion, you still have to pay the, you still have to pay the government fees, you have to pay the court fees. And I'm like, who put them in this place in the first place? It is you government. So why do we have to pay? And that's the process. And it's very, very bad. And getting caught dates is very, very bad. It's very, very bad that the, our government is incarcerating people without releasing them for, for, for whims and caprices. So now I have 10 people that I'm trying to get out of jail. I have, I have, uh, I have fired for two people for the past two months. We haven't gotten a date. And now the, the high court is burnt. So I'm now frustrated, and now what I have to do is either go public or now write a letter to the chief judge of the frustration requesting that this person should be released. It's very, very pathetic that we don't, we don't care about our, 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 our people. It's very, very pathetic that this is happening under our watch in a beloved country like us. All right, I'm also going to, you know, first say thank you for all that you do um, individually to ensure that these people are um, set you know, free at some point. Um, it doesn't paint a really a good picture in any way because some other thing that we would also realize is that the correctional facilities and those prisons do not in any way rehabilitate any of these persons. And so they come out of those uh, facilities maybe even more damaged than they were when they went in. Um, I'm going to speak now on the prison breaks in Edo State and in Delta State in Wari and what also almost uh, happened here in Lagos at the Ecoe prisons. Are uh, these signs that, you know, the prison situation in Nigeria is a ticking time bomb? Right. It is more than a ticking time bomb. Yes, I can hear you. It is more than a ticking time bomb. It is an ordinance to prisoners. 
and so and so on so on ability of three thousand when people break out of prisons you have um a lot of hardened criminals who have no business being in the public let out into the public space and you have persons that have been incarcerated for nobody knows the amount of years and they haven't had they haven't had the real treatment they should have now, what do you expect to happen to them? Do you think they will come after you and tell you, hey, guy, give me your money? Or they will use that frustration and anger, especially the ATMs, where people that feel that they have no business being in jail and who really have no business being in jail until they've been convicted. How do you expect they react to you? They will not, they will not come and tell you, oh, guy, do this, do this, do this, um, give us this. They will use force. And that's where, and that's, and, and, they are not reason with such persons. So please, I'm calling on the federal government as a matter of urgency to take prison decongestion um, very, very seriously. Very, very seriously. We have people that their lives have been wasted in, in facilities where they have not been proven they're guilty. And that has to stop. And that's the whole essence of the campaign of this NGO. Are there laws that Nigeria should immediately start looking into implementing? Are there bills that you feel must be passed immediately? Um, and also the um, establishment of mobile courts, you know, how much will that also help? Firstly, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, which was um, set up, which was passed in 2015, is a very, very laudable act. And most states have now started um, enacting their own versions of it. But an act without a will to enforce it, what use is that? The first place they have to start, uh, start all this thing is from the police stations. The police stations, information has gotten to me before this crisis that there are stations where over 100 people are kept. Why are you detaining people for days on end? Is a police station a correctional facility, number one? Number two, there are still laws. Thank God Lagos State is having a criminal law reform commission. And I, I am preparing my paper to submit to the commission. And the paper would recommend, firstly, that the police should just stick to investigation. When they finish investigating, they will pass it to the DPP. And the BPP will now recommend those for trial. And if a, a police officer that is not a lawyer has no business in um, carrying out any prosecution, and this should be in tangent with the DPP. Secondly, I would also recommend that the that bills, bills, bill system should be reorganized in such a way that when somebody has bill, the person should be out within 24 and 48 hours. And there should be a holding cell in every court premises, a holding cell whereby every 24 hours, a magistrate will go in there and review those that are, have not been discharged, have not been released on bill. We have to put things in perspective so that we don't end up, uh, end up messing up our criminal justice system. And also, it is, it's also good that trials for criminal justice, um, trials for crime should be initiated and the person should be discharged or convicted within six months. All these trials spending 10 years and 12 years it will not work out. It will not work out for the confidence of the international community in us. It will not work out for the confidence of we citizens in our judiciary. We must have confidence in our judiciary. And we keep blaming the judges. Meanwhile, the system, the system is making them look, look like lame dogs. And that system must be corrected as a matter of urgency. It must. I'm insisting it must be corrected. It's, it's, um, it's a sad story, um, the way you've described it. Um, um, I, I'm starting to imagine how many families have lost um, you know, sons and daughters for years without being aware of their whereabouts uh, simply because of failure of the criminal justice uh, system and, of course, uh, you know, the correctional facilities. Um, how much assistance would you be seeking, um, yourself and your agency, in order to um, have a, I mean, be able to pull more people out of those facilities? Well, the system we are looking at is 
for every state in the Federation to set up a justice sector reform system committee. That reform committee, some states have it, some states don't have it, and I wonder why those states don't have it. That reform committee would have the commissioner of police, this, uh, the chief judge, the attorney general, a member of the Bar Association, a member of civil society. And that reform committee is the umbrella through which we will work towards the decongestion of these inmates. And we are looking for the congestion of at least per state 500 inmates. 500 inmates based on criteria of length of time in prison and the crime they have committed, based on based on the age and um, their mental the mental situation and what is the original police spend. Let me break it down. Let's say you let's say one is in jail for one is in prison for stealing and stealing the the. The punishment, the terms of years for stealing is, let's say, three to five years. And you're still in jail and you're still going to court for seven years. What are you still doing in court for? What are you still doing in jail for? Those are the things, those are the things my NGO would like to propagate so that we will now see massive decongestion, not all these 18 pieces. And then also persons that have been in jail facilities without going to court should be released immediately. If you're, I have, a, I have a case which is pathetic. Ten years under uh, for armed robbery, three years into into his incarceration, two of the other co-accused were released on amnesty. He's the only one. Seven years later, he's still in jail. Haba, what what nation are we building? Are we building a nation where we have more criminals? Are we building a nation where we will rehabilitate these people that have made mistakes and, and put them on the right course? That is, that is that is that is that is the that is the message I want to send to those in authority. Clean up the, the clean up the um, correctional facility system. Rehabilitate. Um, let 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 private sponsors come in and take and 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 do rehabilitation of these prison facilities, correctional facilities, and let us move forward. And my NGO is also campaigning for a rehabilitation center whereby once you come out of prison, you spend about six months in that center to be able to detoxify and to be able to change your mindset. We must do something. We must do something for these people. We must do something for Nigeria. And we must start by giving people the image that we're not a banana republic, but we are a right-thinking person. That's my message for, for those in authority today. Wake up and let us start doing something about the correctional facility system. Can you imagine somebody being in jail, not having, not having knowledge of their people? There's a lady that's been calling me from the female prison in Kirikiri. She was, she, was, she was remanded on child abuse. Four years, she did not go to court. As I was about to start, to start taking over her matter, another NGO took it over, and they're not simply bargaining. She's still in jail. Five years, five years for child abuse. Five years of her life. Five years without seeing her husband. What about people that when they come out, they don't know where their family members are. They are, they are, they don't have, um, they don't have, they don't have funds. They don't have anything. What do they do? They either go into prostitution if it's a woman, or they go into armed robbery. We have to take care of our, our, our family. We have to take care of our people, and this is the time now. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us, um, and once again, thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It's a conversation that I believe um, must continue. Uh, the the details of this conversation, of course, you know, have come to light mostly because of the events um, of the last uh, one week across Nigeria. The injustice, of course, you know, that has been meted out to these persons who are incarcerated for years without trial. The slow pace of the judicial system, cases that are adjourned for years um, without, you know, seeing the light of day. Um, the urgency with regards police reform. Um, incarcerating people without trial, keeping people beyond 48 hours without charge. Um, um, the, of course, lack of actual rehabilitation in our prisons um, and correctional facilities. Very important conversation. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.